Hello everyone just podcast TV is here please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on new contents. Episode 157. Some people really can't not fight. James was very fast. Without any hesitation he snatched the room card from Fernand's hand. Then he asked the concierge at the front desk. Why? Tell me. Why? What why? She asked pretending to be confused. She was obviously the boss. It had been her idea to register Fernan and bump James out of his room. Don't play dumb with me. Isn't this the room that I bought from that young couple at a high price? Why did you give it to that guy? James showed the concierge the room card he had snatched. Fernan, the Frenchman, frowned and looked James over from head to toe. Seeing that James was dressed very casually and didn't look like someone of high status, he smiled contemptuously and said... This is the world of the rich. I don't think it was made for men like you. He was about to grab the room card in James's hand, but James dodged and Fernand missed. When the concierge heard Fernand's mocking words, not only did she not show a proper attitude, she sneered at James. James had never been treated like this before. He was instantly enraged, but he wasn't about to let these people get under his skin. He laughed. You've got some nerve looking down on me. But she ignored him. She was interested only in the stack of money in front of her. Fernan the Frenchman and the woman hanging on his arm smiled at this moment. They looked at James with contempt as if they thought James was ignorant. They did not seem to be in a hurry to get to the room. Instead, they sat on the sofa opposite the front desk of the hotel and watched the show with interest. The concierge, seeing that James was going to be difficult, said... Well, your deal with that couple is completely a private third-party deal. It has nothing to do with our hotel. The room belongs to our hotel. We only recognize the identity of the original reserved guest. Now that they have left, we naturally have the right to take back this room and control it freely. What a joke. When I was trading with that young couple just now, the three of you witnessed it with your own eyes. You didn't make any objection then. In my opinion, you have your eyes on this tip, right? James spoke calmly, but his words were very sharp. You, you are talking nonsense, said the concierge. Don't you dare talk to me like that. I advise you to leave immediately, otherwise I'll call security. James wasn't impressed. He laughed and said, leave? Why should I leave? I'm staying here. He'd faced pirates and top assassins. How could a few hotel security guards threaten such a person? In James's eyes, such a threat was a huge joke. Fernan was probably tired of seeing such a low-level person acting cool. He immediately laughed and said, Hey, American, stop embarrassing yourself. I get it. You want to show off in front of your little girlfriends, but you're not fooling anyone. You'll never be anything but a nobody. But my time is valuable. And I don't want to waste it arguing with you. Here, this card has a million dollars on it. Just take it and leave. After Fernan finished speaking, he threw a bank card to the ground in front of James. His eyes were full of contempt. He felt that in the next moment, James would kneel on the ground like a dog begging for mercy. He would pick up the bank card and give him a sincere smile. The three staffers at the front desk of the hotel were stunned by his action. Spending a million USD just to save some time? This was throwing away money, treating money like dirt. But James did not move at all, nor did he intend to move. Instead, he looked at Fernan with a mocking expression. At that moment, he really wanted to say, You're throwing a million dollars away. Are you sure you are serious? Not only did James look at Fernan with ridicule in his eyes, but the three beauties besides him did the same. Vanessa, Katie, and Krista did not know that James was already a billionaire, but they had followed him for a while, and they knew he didn't lack money. Being mocked by their gazes, Fernand coldly said, Ignorant American, you'll regret this. He was a famous wine merchant in France, a big boss who specialized in trading wine to the world. He was worth tens of billions now. He was a famous businessman. With his status... He had no need to argue with James and the others. However, he turned to the hotel staff and threatened them. 
I'm having a terrible experience in your hotel. If you guys don't settle this quickly, I might consider staying in another hotel next time. When the concierge heard that, she immediately wiped her face and walked up to Furman apologetically. Yes, 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 Mr. Furman. I'll quickly solve this problem. I promise that the problem will be solved very soon. She didn't want to lose out on Fernand's tips. After saying that, she directly picked up the phone at the front desk and called the security team in the scenic area. Because this huge cliff village was a unified scenic area, and the hotels were usually relatively small, they all shared a security team. Krista figured they were here for a vacation and she did not want to make a big deal out of this. She said to James, Sir, why don't we just let it go and change to another hotel? If it really doesn't work out, we will go to another island. We are mainly here for tourism. Don't spoil our trip. No, said James. Little Krista, this isn't like you. These jerks bully others and treat them differently. How can we just let it go like that? Yes, I think James is right, said Vanessa. Krista still didn't like it, but when she saw Katie also showed her support for James, she did not speak anymore. What are you trying to do? sniffed the concierge mockingly. What a vulgar American! She knew that the security guards in the scenic area were of high quality. They weren't ordinary people, and some were retired special forces soldiers. They would teach this yank a lesson. But just as she was thinking these things, James slapped her face without saying a word. He had wanted to do it before, but that was the last straw. Watch your mouth, he said coolly. The slap was indeed quite fierce. It made the concierge stagger and almost fall down. Her cheek swelled around James's red fingerprints quickly. You, you, how dare you hit a woman? But just as she complained, she saw James raise his hand again. She was so scared that she hid behind the front desk of the hotel and didn't dare to speak anymore. For a moment, the lobby of the hotel became dead silent. The atmosphere was oppressive to the extreme. Even Fernan quieted down and did not say anything else. But because he was a frequent visitor here, he knew that the security guards were retired special forces soldiers. He figured there would be a good show later. It would be good for him to stay on the sidelines as a spectator. About a minute later, a big man led a team of security guards into the hotel's lobby. What happened here? Denise, why did you call us? Episode 158. Do we still want to fight? The concierge rushed to the big guy for protection. She pointed at James and said fiercely, Troy, it's this man. He hit me just now. In fact, he hadn't been talking to her, but to another young woman at the front desk. This Denise was his girlfriend. She was the reason he had rushed over to the reception area. After confirming that his girlfriend Denise was fine, Troy said, What? Denise, he hit you? Did he cause that bruise on your face? Yes, it's him. Denise burst into tears in front of Troy. The young security guard wanted to show off in front of his girlfriend. Thus, he immediately comforted Denise. Okay, I'll take care of it. Then he said to one of his subordinates, What are you all standing there for? Do whatever it takes to get rid of this guy. The person he was talking to was strong. His thick arms looked like James's thighs. He nodded and stared at James with a fierce look. Yes, he said. Although he was not as tall as James, he figured he was at least twice as strong. He didn't waste any more time. He walked over to James. When he was in the army, this man's nickname was Rhinoceros. He estimated that this skinny American in front of him would probably break into two with a single punch. He was still considering whether he should use his full strength. He didn't want to kill the guy. But at this moment, James stretched out his hand and said to him, Wait. Vanessa, Krista, and Katie stood outside the door. They knew James's combat strength, so they did not have the slightest intention of worrying about him. It was these security guards they pitied. But everyone else, including the Frenchman, Fernand, misunderstood James's gesture. They all thought he was afraid and wanted to apologize. Troy smiled coldly and looked at James with a mocking look in his eyes. What? 
Now you know fear? You were pretty brave when you hit a woman just now. As soon as Troy finished speaking, Fernan actually laughed out loud. He lazily sat on the sofa and said, You stupid American. I just said that this is no place for you. I even gave you money and kindly asked you to leave, but you didn't. Now you're going to get what's coming to you. Troy, who knew of Fernan, nodded politely to him. Then he turned to look at James and shouted in a stern voice, Get down on your knees and apologize to Denise. Then get out of here. If you don't, then I'm afraid that today you will know the power of my security team. As soon as Troy finished speaking, everyone looked at James and the others with contempt and mockery in their eyes. After hearing that, James burst into laughter. What gives you the idea that I want to apologize? He had just said, wait, but he hadn't had the chance to say anything after that. At this time, Vanessa suddenly jumped out and said to everyone, No! Krista added, I think you guys are mistaken. Mr. Tucker did not mean that. He was going to tell you that fighting one by one was a bit of a waste of time. He wants to fight you all at once. And Katie said, Yes, you are right. Furthermore, this room is too narrow and cannot be used at all. He doesn't want to break anything, so he thinks you should take this outside. James looked at the three beauties and clapped for them. Well said. You guys are really my confidants. You even know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Amazing. They'd said exactly what James had been thinking. It was impossible for him to apologize. Vanessa immediately raised her neck after receiving James's praise, like a high and mighty swan. You'd better believe it, she said. The four of them were still able to talk and laugh in such a situation. The others were dumbfounded. It turned out that this guy did not want to admit his mistake and apologize, but wanted to fight all the security team members at once. James thought that they did not understand what he meant, so he patiently explained, Yes, they're right. You guys come at me together. I'm going to fight all the members of your entire security team by myself. Was this person crazy? This was what everyone in the lobby except James and his three companions thought. One corner of Troy's mouth rose instantly as he asked with a cold smile, Are you sure? Because including him, there were three retired Special Forces members on his security team. Usually, each of them could take on ten people by himself. In his opinion, this skinny American man was really overestimating himself. James did not seem to be joking when he said, I'm sure, I'm very sure. He was so relaxed that he did not feel any pressure. He turned around and walked out the door. Hmm, acting mysterious. The strong security guard nicknamed Rhinoceros charged at James's back. You challenged our entire security team by yourself. I'm going to beat you until your mother doesn't even recognize you. He used almost all his strength in one punch. His fist made a sharp whistling sound as it cut through the air. Just as it was three inches away from James's back, James instinctively felt its approach. He moved his body slightly to the side, leaving one foot sticking out. The rhino's fist was moving in. Its inertia caused him to charge forward. In the next second, the huge rhino tripped over James's foot and went flying with a whoosh. His heavy body hit the stone floor outside the hotel door with a dull sound. This once influential soldier lay on the ground without making a sound. He didn't even let out a miserable groan. Oh my god. Troy was completely dumbfounded on the spot. Rhinoceros was a retired Special Forces member. He didn't even make a move as he lay on the ground. There was no movement. This was unbelievable. But now that things had come to this, no matter how formidable the other party was, he wasn't going to let it go. After all, he was in charge of the security of this village. He should have taken it upon himself anyway. Brothers, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Troy was also a very brave person. He took the lead and rushed out of the hotel on the spot. He started to attack James. In the courtyard outside the hotel, the dull sound of fists hitting flesh could be heard continuously. Two minutes later, James felt that his arms were sore from the beating. He clapped his hands and looked at Troy, who was beaten black and blue. He smiled and asked, Well, Troy, 
My respected security captain, are we still going to fight? Troy looked at this terrifying fellow and shook his head like a rattle drum. We're not going to fight anymore. We're not going to fight anymore, he said. We admit defeat. Episode 159. I'll pay a billion dollars. All right, since we're not fighting anymore, let's just sit here and have a good theoretical discussion. James pointed at Denise. You, tell me what happened just now, honestly. In Denise's eyes, James was like a devil. When she heard what he said, she didn't dare disobey him. She nodded and said, Okay, trembling with fear. The other staff were also trembling. They didn't dare to say no. Even Fernan the Frenchman was shocked by James's fighting skill. He had always thought that he was just a spectator. At worst, he would just shut up. No matter how powerful James was, it had nothing to do with him. He did not know that James thought differently. Just as Denise mustered her courage and was about to tell everyone what had happened, James reached out and interrupted her. Wait a moment. Call the boss of your hotel and let him hear this. This? Denise looked at James with eyes full of pleading when she heard that. She hoped that James would not make her do that. She knew she had been in the wrong. If the boss found out about her character, he would definitely fire her. However, when she saw James's confident look, she didn't dare to disobey him. She could only call the boss of the hotel obediently. Very soon, the owner of the hotel came over. He was a local in his 40s or 50s. When he walked into the hotel lobby, he saw Troy, the captain of the security team, who had been beaten black and blue. His heart shook with fear. Hadn't this guy been in the special forces? How'd he get beaten up so miserably? It was really inconceivable. Hello, sir. I am the owner of the hotel. Philippos Anastopoulos. May I ask if you are looking for me? Philippos Anastopoulos remained calm and collected. He suppressed the surprise in his heart and walked towards James as he spoke. Yes, James nodded and responded politely to him. Then he turned to Denise and said, Go on. Denise was shocked when she heard James talking to her. Although it was hard, she had to explain the situation. In the end, under James's gaze, Denise told her boss everything that had happened with great difficulty. What? Denise? You've been working here a long time. How could you do that? Mr. Anastopoulos asked her angrily. Go get your last paycheck. I can't afford an employee like you. The most important thing to a hotel was its reputation. If things continued like this, he would be out of business. When Denise heard that the boss was going to fire her, she was so scared that tears started streaming down her face. She quickly begged for mercy. Boss, I was wrong. Give me another chance, please. However, Anastopoulos did not even look at her. He walked straight to James and said sincerely and apologetically, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all my employee's fault. I am very sorry about this. How long do you want to stay? We won't charge you anything. Philippos Anastopoulos was a smart person. He naturally knew that James was not to be trifled with. Therefore, he was respectful. James saw that his attitude was very good and sincere, so he could not continue to be angry. He nodded slightly, indicating that this matter was cleared up. But at this moment, Fernan, who had been silent all this time, suddenly said, Wait a moment, Mr. Anastopoulos. I have a business proposal for you. Although Fernan had seen James's ability, he believed in the power of money. He believed that there was nothing in the world that money could not do. He felt that today he, a wealthy and influential man in France, had been humiliated by a nobody from the States. Therefore, he decided that he wanted to regain face in front of his girlfriend. Oh, Mr. Furman, did you want to discuss the wine business? Asked Anastopoulos. It was obvious that he and Fernan were old acquaintances. Fernan pretended to be mysterious and smiled. No, 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 no. We won't talk about wine this time. We'll talk about your hotel. Philippos Anastopoulos frowned and asked in confusion. What do you mean? Name a price. I'll buy your hotel. Fernan said. When Anastopoulos heard this, he laughed and thought that Fernan was joking with him. His hotel wasn't the finest, but it was worth at least a hundred million U.S. dollars. 
This fellow was not so generous as to spend a large sum of money just to impress a girl. Fernan ignored Anastopoulos' smile and offered a price. 200 million USD. Take it or leave it. Anastopoulos had not expected the other party to say something like this. His eyes widened as if he were being choked. Everyone in the area widened their eyes in disbelief. They could only say that they did not understand the world of the rich. Except for James and the three beauties, they were naturally not among those who were shocked. What? Two... Two hundred million dollars? Mr. Fernan, are you sure you're not joking? Philippos Anastopoulos asked excitedly. I always keep my word. I never joke about business, Fernan said seriously. Anastopoulos said, Deal. Just as he was about to leave to prepare the contract, James suddenly stretched out his hand and said to him with a smile, Wait. Yes, sir. Is there anything else? Anastopoulos felt sorry for James. He smiled and said, Oh, you heard that Mr. Fernan had decided to buy my hotel at a high price. So I'm very sorry, but you'll have to deal with him from now on. As soon as he said that, Fernan looked at James and smiled contemptuously. He clearly meant to say, I won in the end. However, James smiled coldly and ignored him. He said, Oh, Mr. Anastopoulos, I think you misunderstood. That's not why I stopped you just now. Oh, then what is it, sir? James laughed and said calmly, Mr. Anastopoulos, your hotel hasn't been sold yet, so I also want to buy it. What? You, you want to buy my hotel too? Anastopoulos' eyes widened in surprise, but then he looked at James and asked, What price can you offer? His meaning was very clear. Fernand's price was there. Could James offer more? And he wasn't the only one wondering that. Everyone else wanted to know, too. Fernan looked at James with contempt and ridicule. He thought that this unattractive American was just trying to play tricks. It was impossible for him to offer a price higher than 200 million USD. James said calmly, I'll offer 1 billion US dollars. Mr. Anastopoulos, do you think it's enough? Everyone was dumbfounded, including Fernan, who had been looking at James with disdain. There was shock in their eyes, too. Seeing Anastopoulos standing there in a daze with no reaction at all, James smiled and asked again, What? Mr. Anastopoulos, isn't it enough? Do you want more? Anastopoulos finally woke up from his shock after being questioned by James. In an instant, his eyes were filled with passion as he quickly said to James, Oh, no, 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 that, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. He then turned to look at Fernan and said, my respected Mr. Fernan, I'm really sorry, but I'm sure you understand. We're both businessmen, after all. At this moment, James looked at Fernan with the same contempt the Frenchman had shown him earlier. No one had expected such a dramatic scene, least of all Fernan. But then he laughed wildly and said, Mr. Anastopoulos, I advise you to consider carefully. This is your last chance. This American... Take a closer look at his clothes and his appearance. Are you sure that he has a billion dollars? If he can't afford it and you lose the opportunity to do business with me, then it's not worth it. He didn't believe that James could have so much money because James did not look like him. After he finished speaking, he looked at James proudly as if he had exposed James's scheme. However, James had a smile on his face as if he was looking at an ignorant person. He was sincerely amused by how ignorant this guy was. Wait till he found out James really was a billionaire. But when Philippos Anastopoulos heard Fernan's words, he immediately hesitated. Hmm. Obviously, Fernan's words had an impact on him. He was thinking about this problem. But James would not let this opportunity pass by. Mr. Anastopoulos, you don't need to think so hard about this. I can immediately complete the transfer to you. I'm a very honest person, and I don't like to talk too much when a deal has already been decided. Philippos Anastopoulos instantly revealed a smile. He had been skeptical. But now James had said he could transfer the money right away. He had no choice but to believe him. This could no longer be a lie. If it was a lie, wouldn't it be exposed in a minute? James did not hesitate at all. He took out his phone. This kind of large transaction had to be verified by the bank, but that wouldn't take long. A few minutes later, he completed the transfer. Oh my god! 
What have I done to deserve such fortune? Philippos Anastopoulos looked at the notification on his phone with a look of ecstasy. Then he waved his hand and said, Yes, sir, this hotel is yours now. With that, he turned around and ran out of the hotel, leaving everyone behind. One billion dollars. James had transferred the money just like that. Even the three beauties were shocked by James's actions. Krista walked over and shook James's arm. She asked in confusion, Sir, isn't this a bit too wasteful? Although Katie and Vanessa did not speak, the look in their eyes showed they agreed with her. Laughing, James touched Krista's long black hair and said, Krista, it is not a waste. It is not a waste at all. As long as you want it, as long as you like it, I do not mind buying the entire world for you. Sir. James. Mr. Tucker. The three of them were moved to tears when they heard this. They immediately threw themselves into James's arms. They were truly moved by James's words. They did not know that James had a hundred billion dollars. A mere billion dollars was nothing. However, what he'd said was true. Life was extremely short. Why not spend money on women? To him, money was just a number. If he could make the three of them smile, he would spend generously. At this moment, Fernand's expression darkened. He hadn't expected this based on James's appearance. Clearly, he was a true tycoon. Although he was also very rich, he could not directly spend a billion dollars. He could not directly transfer money like that. At this point, it was very obvious that he had lost. James looked at Fernan and sniffed. Phew, said Fernan. You were lucky this time. But don't let me see you again, or you will die. Fernan's expression was extremely ugly, but the situation was already irreparable. So in the end, he could only throw out a vicious sentence, hug his girlfriend, and leave. <laughs>